directly on all art all other art exhibits. So when you calculate the concordant pairs in this case, you get these values, and discordant pairs, you get these values. Again, I explain this in detail in another video going through Kendall, Kendall's Tau. But then the Spearman, we see when we square those deviations, as the formula for Spearman rank correlation tells us to, we get a really big 11 deviation. 1 minus 12 is 11 when you calculate the absolute deviations. And then when you square that 11 value, you get a really big 121. So you can start to think, well, what are these big deviations going to have an impact on the formula, even though everything else is perfect? There's, there are no deviations amongst the other 10 art exhibits, and so that when you square 0, you get 0. Well, what happens is that Kendall's tau comes out to be 0 0.364 in this case, and Spearman's row is even is lower, not larger. It is lower than Kendall's tau. So although in practice, in most cases, you'll get a larger Spearman rank than Kendall's tau, and a large number of books, textbooks and papers tell us to expect larger Spearman's row, it's not always the case. You will get a, a smaller row when the deviations are, are huge uh, amongst a couple of observations, as they are in this case. And I think you can start to wonder, well, when would I want to use Kendall's Tau versus Spearman's rank correlation? Because they're actually testing something different. And one example that came to mind, in fact, I used this art exhibit case, was what if the student, one of the students was eventually going to replace this master? And this art um, uh, company or uh, whatever it is that evaluates art, they were happy to make small errors from time to time, but they did not want to make huge errors ever because it would be an embarrassment to the company to do that or the um, art um, museum. It would be an embarrassment uh, to make a really huge error even if it was just once. Uh, whereas Kendall's Tau is relatively uh, insensitive to that. So in the case of so if we use Kendall's Tau under this pretense that we only wanted a student that can roughly replicate the master, and it's okay to make small mistakes here and there, but never make a large mistake, it's actually better to use Kendall's Tau in that case to estimate the correspondence. Uh, whereas Spearman's Row, I should say, <laughs> I made that, I, made, I should say the opposite. Spearman's Rank is actually the better case because it will detect those sensitivities, sorry about that, Spearman's rank will detect those, uh, th those rare and unusual sensitivities that are very big discrepancies. All right, so in this case, where we want to find out that the student is, student two is worse, we don't want student two because although he's or she's perfectly, perfectly uh, concordant in these cases, well, not concordant according to Kendall's Tau, but is getting perfect ranks, <laughs> correspondence, they d that person is making two mistakes and they're huge whoppers. And Spearman's rank is detecting that by showing a really small correlation here. There's other things that you should consider between Spearman's row and Kendall's tau. They actually represent different effects. S Kendall's tau is representing the proportion of concordant uh, pairs uh, relative to discordant pairs. That's what it's doing. Uh, Spearman's row doesn't do that, and the real truth of it is that it's not easy to d discern an, in an intuitive interpretation of Spearman's row. I don't think anyone's ever advanced one. In practice, Spearman's row will be larger than Kendall's tau, although I showed an example where that's not the case. Um, Gibbons, uh, in his book on nonparametric associations, on non-parametric measures of associations, states that Kendall's tau has more attractive qualities over Spearman's row. And there's other people that argue that. Uh, first of all, Kendall's tau has an intuitive interpretation, the proportion of concordant pairs minus the proportion of discordant pairs. Spearman rank does not have a similar intuitive interpretation. Kendall's tau gives better estimates of the corresponding population parameter especially in smaller sample sizes. And not only that, p-values associated with Kendall's tau are more accurate in smaller sample sizes. And I'm giving as an example something smaller than 12. 
Uh, so I'm asking the question, why isn't everyone using Kendall's tau over Spearman's rank correlation? Especially given that Spearman's rank correlation is really, really sensitive, as I demonstrated, to really large discrepancies that only occur once or twice in a data set, but are otherwise perfectly uh, concordant from one rank to the other uh, in the data set. Now, again, you could that could be useful in some cases, but my... But maybe not. Maybe in a lot of cases that isn't the case. Uh, and I suspect the answer is because uh, Kendall's tau had first mover advantage. Uh, and so because Spearman's rank correlation came out before Kendall's tau, people got used to using it. It's easier to calculate Spearman's rank correlation, especially back in the day when you had to do it by hand. It's actually much easier, um, I would say, that to calculate uh, Spearman's rank correlation especially if you had tied ranks, which happens from time to time. Uh, and I suppose another advantage is that Spearman's rank correlation tends to be larger, and people want larger effect sizes to report in their studies. And so they report them. Uh, so that might be a number of exa examples why Spearman's rank correlation is used more often. But uh, statistically, there's probably more justification to use Kendall's Tau. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you next time.